Since the dawn of civilization, wedding photographers have been debating whether to have one catalog for all their weddings or separate catalog for each wedding. And I've been on both sides of this debate and I want to tell you about the differences, the pros and cons of each of these options and spoiler alert why having one catalog is the way. This is the way. Let's go. Hello everyone, this is Magic, wedding photographer, Sony Europe ambassador, father for children. Welcome to this YouTube channel, the channel where I mostly talk about weddings and Sony gear. So, so yeah, subscribe if you're into any of these uh, topics. And today we're talking Lightroom catalog. And let me just start with a few basic informations for those of you who are not like super geeks of Lightroom. So we all have like full understanding how does the Lightroom catalog work and how those differences between having one catalog and multiple catalog would benefit your work. So Lightroom is an application that enables you to manage, import, edit your photos and then export your photos, even make slideshows, make map and, and stuff like that. I'm going to focus on library module though and a develop module. So the two main modules, so managing and editing your photos. And the first thing that is super important to have in mind and to know and to remember is that Lightroom does not store your photos, right? Your photos have to be somewhere on a hard drive, like where you import them. So you always pick a place when your photos and raw files are. If you don't know where your raw files are, you can always find it using a Lightroom. So in library module, you can just go to the folders on the left and right click on them and be like, show where my folder is and show the photo location. You can just choose individual photo, right click on it and find the actual location of this file. But for those of you who are pros, I do hope you all have a system in place and you know where your files are and you know how you manage your files and you have a structure of folders because that's very important to have. I'll show you my system and how I structure my folders and my raw files later in this video. So if Lightroom doesn't store your photos, what does it actually do? What does the library module do? And when you import your files, what happens? Okay, so library module is used to manage your files so you can keyword them, you can color tag them, you can rate them stars one to five, you can filter for lenses and like all of this stuff. You can edit the information about the files, so add the copyright, like all that stuff, like by, by managing your file in a way, like adding additional information to your file to help you managing these files. And then in library module, you can also create a collections of images. So this is also some sort of managing your files by putting some of the files in collections. You can create smart collections so you can create a collection that will automatically um, you know find all the photos from a certain lens and so on so on but then there's like important fact to know that most of the stuff that you will do in the library module to your photos will be actually written to the XMP file that will be next to your raw file and you can actually access this information from any other program than Lightroom too. So if you add a five stars to an image in Lightroom uh, and then you will find this photo and open it in for example Photo Mechanic it will show a five stars. But there's one huge thing that you need to change in the settings right now because recently with the recent update of Adobe, it doesn't actually update the information in that XMP file, which is bizarre. And so go to your catalog settings and check if your automatically write changes into XMP um, is checked or unchecked. It has to be checked. Please check this. So then whatever changes you make. And then th the big thing is that not only the changes you make in terms of stars and keywords and stuff, but also the all the editing information that you're changing in the develop module, like all that stuff. If you write automatically to XMP file, you can open the same raw file in, for example, Adobe Photoshop, and you will see all the edits you've done to the photo. So even if something happens to your Lightroom catalog, it gets corrupted, you, you like your disk gets broken, but you still have access to your raw files and then your XMP files are updated, you will not lose any of the crucial information or edits you've done to these photos. Okay, and there's one more thing about the library module that takes time and takes space on hard drive, and it's called previews. So whenever you're importing photos, 
to your Lightroom catalog, it asks you what types of previews you uh, want to create. And there are two types of previews. The first type, like the general type of previews, the, the basic previews are the previews that works only in library module. So these are the minimal previews, standard previews, one-to-one -one, or embedded previews that you select on import. Or later on, you can also go um, to your library previews if you're in library mode, library previews, and then generate the previews or discard your previews. So these previews are used for you to quickly be able to scroll through your files in your library module. So depending on which type of previews you choose to generate, you can either have full 100% previews. So every time you zoom in, you don't have to wait for anything. You see all the details. Only if you select minimal previews, every time you zoom in, the, the Lightroom actually needs to read data from the raw file. So it will give you that loading time for you to actually see 100% zoom of the photo. Again, these only apply for the library module and they can take a lot of hard drive space and time to generate. So choose wisely depending on how you use library module in your work. But then there's a second type of previews called smart previews. And these are previews for develop module. So develop module in Lightroom is the module that you use to edit your photos. It's basically a camera raw in Lightroom. So you can change all the exposure settings, like up, apply presets, everything changes when you switch to develop module. But what also changes is that you don't read from previews anymore. Now you read either from actual raw file or from a smart preview. So smart previews are really cool because they enable you to edit photos when you have disconnected your drives with raw files. So for example, you keep your raw files on your external drive and you will disconnect this drive, but your Lightroom catalog is on your internal drive, okay? So you can still open your Lightroom catalog, you see your photos. So if you have your smart previews generated for that specific folder of photos, let's say, you can still edit these photos, not only edit, but also export, only up to around 2K of resolution, but still that's, for example, enough for Instagram. So you can kind of work remotely on these files and then you can attach your drive back for a full export and like you don't have to do anything additional. So the Lightroom will automatically detect that now you not only have smart previews, but also like a full files. The other thing with smart previews is that if you choose to edit always with smart previews, it makes it faster. Okay, so you can go to your Lightroom settings and you can choose always edit from smart previews, even if your raw files are accessible. So this is the example when you have your raw files on your hard drive, but the hard drive is attached. So you have access to all the raw files, but the Lightroom still uses smart previews to edit because this is faster and it's way faster. It's actually noticeable faster. So if you don't have this checked and you kind of feel that your Lightroom is too slow, you can always check that and work only on smart previews. There's one downside to that. You can see a quality loss when previewing the smart preview when editing photo. It's only when you preview it. it like it's not worse quality in terms of the images and worse quality. It's just the quality of the preview in the develop module. So like, look at this image. You can see that sky right here is sort of like wrongly graded. So the gradient in the sky is not very smooth. It will change if you zoom in 100%, you will have to wait a bit. It will generate the actual full preview from raw. So you can now see it's super smooth. And then you click zoom back and, and it's again, super clear because now you have a full raw preview. But if you go back one photo, and back to this photo again, it will again, uh, you know, use the smart preview. So you're back seeing the, the not very smooth transition here in the colors. So that can be annoying. So it's up to you whether you choose to edit uh, faster or you want to see clear images always. For me, being aware that it's only a preview thing, I prefer going for speed. So I use smart previews. So while your actual RAWs I'm saying this third time, I think. So actual rows are not stored in your Lightroom. They're somewhere in the drive. The previews though, both smart previews and normal previews are stored on your hard drive and they're taking additional space. 
So if you go to a folder where you, where you keep your catalog, Lightroom catalog, next to your Lightroom catalog, you will see the name of the catalog, previews, and then the name of the catalog, smart previews. And these, these files, they actually include all of these previews that you've generated. So it can take a lot of space. You can always discard those previews, even delete these files and your Lightroom catalog will still work but it will you know, need to regenerate some of the previews or you will lose your smart previews. You will not lose your editing, you will not lose any of the crucial stuff. You'll just be back to a slower state of Lightroom. Okay, perfect. I think we do have an understanding of how Lightroom catalog works, the, the library module, the develop module, the changes you make to your raw files and so on. So let's talk one catalog versus multiple catalogs. I used to use one catalog for each wedding. Okay, so how I was doing that um, in the folder structures, I have a folders uh, for wedding. So I had a weddings 2019 folder. For example, this was the last year that I used a separate catalog for each job. I also I also had like non weddings 2019 and then YouTube and like folders for each type of work I do. Folders meaning like on my actual hard drive folders that. I store my files in. And then in 2019, I have listed all my weddings. So I have all my weddings and inside each wedding folder, I have raw files, my raw pics, which are the called raw files. So I'm calling in external um, software. I'm using a narrative select right now to call my images. I used to use photo mechanic to call my images. So I have uncalled bunch of images and then a cold folder of images. And then back in that days, I also had a folder with a Lightroom catalog in that folder. Okay, so each folder, basically like a job folder, let's say this wedding of Sarah and Mark, it includes all the files that I needed for me to be able to work on this wedding. So I have all the raw files, I have called raw files, I have Lightroom catalog, I have export, so everything is in there. So I was able to shuffle those folders around. As soon as I was done with it, I was moving that folder to more archive storage and that's it. So if you are type of a person, like and your way of doing things is edit, export and then forget, delete, you don't keep, you don't go back to editing, re-editing files, you don't go back to Lightroom catalog, you don't do collections, you don't do any of this stuff, just export stuff, keep the JPEGs and delete stuff. This might be a good way to, of doing things, you know, it's pretty clean, you have a nice structure of your folder, everything is one folder, you can just move it to your archive as soon as you're done, you can discard all the previews or even delete a Lightroom catalog and be like, I'm done with you. But for me, it started to be sort of annoying because that made it impossible to actually manage this file, creating collections from lenses or filtering the lenses of if I wanted need to go back to a tilt shift photo that I've shot in 2019 and a specific wedding, I needed to go back to that specific catalog, open this catalog, and maybe find this image to, to compare, maybe to do before and after as I'm doing a preset. And also for doing this YouTube videos, I do want to have access to all these files really quickly, maybe make some changes, re-edit some stuff. And so yeah, so it started to be really annoying to needing to go back to a catalog, find a catalog, open a catalog. Um, and then also working off from a laptop, I always needed to, you know, mount a specific drive. So for example, SSD that I had a folder with a specific wedding on it to open that wedding. So yeah, it became just annoying. And on top of all that, I started keeping all of my archived weddings on my NAS storage. And you cannot open a Lightroom catalog from a network drive. It won't open, it will say, I won't open. So if I needed to back to a specific Lightroom catalog for some reason, I needed to copy that catalog back to my hard drive and then open it. So I changed all of that. And I went all in for one catalog to rule them all. And it's, it was actually simple to do it. I just created a new catalog and then you can import from older catalogs. So you can import from another catalog and then choose a catalog, import. And I imported like 20 or 30 or uh, actually probably around 50 of catalogs from all the 2019. Then I started keeping that structure from 2020, 2021, now 2022. So check this out. I right now have a Lightroom catalog that I keep on my internal SSD drive on my MacBook Air. So I have this little tiny MacBook Air here that the only thing that is on this computer is that Lightroom catalog, that, that's it. The rest I keep on my SSDs, external drives and so on. So 
The structure right now is that if I'm working on a specific wedding, I will keep it on a SSD drive. So all the raw files are going to be on SSD drive. I'm going to have a copy of these files on another SSD drive. So all the current work is right here. So here on the left, you can see master files are on SSD, but the previews, smart previews are generated and I keep the smart previews obviously where the Lightroom catalog is. So on my internal SSD on my computer. And that allows me to actually work on this wedding anytime I want and anywhere I am in the world. So I can just, I don't have to plug any of the drives because the Lightroom catalog with the previews are on this drive. I only need to plug the drive if I want to export these files later on in full resolution, which is very convenient. But also on top of that, when I'm done with that wedding, I'm going to discard the smart previews as I don't need them anymore. I don't need to edit these files on the go anymore and the way I'm doing things I'm copying them actually on my computer I just select the folder I copy the folder to my NAS storage and then I show Lightroom hey please I want to update the location of this file so right click on this folder click update location I show the new location which is my network drive called Marty McFly so I show it it's on the Marty McFly and now you can see it will just automatically move here in the library module all these files, this wedding, from my SSD drive to my external network storage. And now I can just go ahead and just delete the files from the SSD. You can also just move it inside Lightroom, but I do prefer doing the, the, this thing outside of Lightroom. So it's like a little bit safer, I think. So this way, right now, I have one Lightroom catalog that I can open at any time, okay? It does include over 80,000 photos from the last few years, most of these photos are actually stored on a NAS storage, but I have a preview so I can quickly just go back and scroll through some of these images if I need on my laptop. So if I need to go back, if I need to check the collections, if I need to filter my images, if I need to find all the images I've shot with 50G Master like in the last two years, if I need all the photos that I've shot in a specific aperture, I can, I can do it. I can just manage all the files, like do all this fun stuff from library module anytime I want. That's pretty convenient. And what is more, since all the raw files I have, I keep the raw files. I keep them on my NAS storage, meaning a network storage, wherever I want and I have an access to an internet, I can just connect to that server and mount that drive, that Marty McFly drive on my desktop and be able to access all of these 80,000s of raw files from anywhere in the world I am. And also for me, Lightroom works exactly the same with 80,000 photos in it as it was working with just like 1,000 photos in it. So there's no, you know, issues here. I've, I've, I've read that Lightroom changed the way of doing things the last two years. It used to be that up to some number of photos, it would just get slower and slower, but now I don't see any issues with that. So yeah, one catalog to rule them all, to access your files anywhere in the world, to, to, to use all the collections, color tagging, all this stuff from your tiny MacBook Air. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. I hope that gives some light on how to work with Lightroom catalog. And yeah, let me know of your way of doing things and your thoughts on that in the comments. See you in the next video.